Okay. Hi, everybody. This is just so much fun. I don't think I've ever interviewed you, Amy. No. Do you, I don't think there's anything like this that we've done in our past. So this is a first. Mom and Mimi have done a lot, but not this. this. So I, I think it's really kind of fun. Um, you've done such a great job interviewing all of the fierce leaders that you've interviewed so far and so it's kind of intimidating to turn around and interview you and i guess i drew the short straw <laughs> um so i think that um a lot of us know some of the answers to these so i switched them up and um, changed them but i also realized there are some newer leaders that don't know all the answers so you're going to have we're going to have to be a little historical in our hysteria here okay so i broke it up into categories and i'm starting with the basics so um th these are just like really easy okay this is like you'll get 100 percent on these um how did you first really hear about essential oils not i'm not talking about when i whipped up that concoction for you like had you ever heard about them before no, uh, well, when I sat at your kitchen table, right? Oh, tell me more about that. I don't uh, and then I sat side by side and you had your little, like we opened your family physician's kit with the little cardboard inserts, right? And I remember you had to smell peppermint and wild orange. I think maybe frankincense. We kind of played around with that. Oh, that's kind of interesting. So that was like the first time. And then, then you had a health issue, right? And I, I said, don't go to the doctor. Trust me. Let's, let's try this. And yeah. We still lived in the cities, but we were home that weekend. Yep. And you said your appointment is after the weekend, but let's see what we can accomplish over the weekend. And we accomplished a lot with the whales over the weekend. That was pretty, a pretty big aha moment. We were standing right behind you at the island. <laughs> your father was helping whip up oils on a tampon, as I remember for you. <laughs> it was like, it's a good life, guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. The things we do in this family. So, um. So we know that you really fell in love with the oils that helped you with your recurrent bladder infections. But what, what we really want to know is what was that first oil that you truly loved? Like take that out of the equation. What way back in the day? I mean, I know what Emily loved. I know what Gary loved. I don't know what your jam was in the very beginning. I guess I'm going to say balance, but I honestly don't know. Is that terrible? I don't know. It's okay. I didn't know either. So that's why I'm asking. I don't know the answers to these questions. <laughs> like mother, like daughter. <laughs> Balance, right? Um, so do you remember like how it came about that you enrolled? Like, how did that happen? Was it an awkward conversation or was it like Laura Whipperman who like, I did I like enroll you on the side or like what happened with that? I remember nothing. It was in the spring of 2013, right? Mm -hmm. I think it was the spring of 2013 and I don't remember we we must have talked about it <laughs> isn't this so odd that I really don't like I, even if I really tried and I we have like good memories yeah not really remembering that you do remember which kit right family physicians yeah which is now the healthy start Okay, so I want you to try to remember to when you got it in the mail. I want you to remember, like, where were you living? And when it came in the mail, do you remember any of that, like opening it up or anything? All I remember is, so I know it came to us when we were in our apartment over in the Twin Cities. I was still in school. We were in married um, housing. And married housing, right? Gary and I were over there. He was done with school. He was working. I was trying to finish school and play volleyball. I remember this, though. The one conversation I remember very clearly, and it wasn't awkward at all. I thought it was a really valuable conversation. You just, like, kept coming, like, supported us and kept coming back to us. And one of the things you came back on was, like, I think somebody told you you were supposed to ask me these questions, like, well, how much do you think you could spend a month on the, on this? We were like looking at my loyalty rewards and I was like, max $10 a month, max, like on a good month. I and don't you, remember any of this. I was like, yeah, no, absolutely not. And so I remember that conversation um, very much. So, and again, it wasn't, I remember you giving us wellness consults like a couple of times and helping Gary and I with that. I remember that. So when you got your oils, was it like a super fast dig into the box or did you, did they like sit on the, on the shelf a little bit or did I not even allow that because I harassed you I think they probably sat really that's so fascinating guys I want you to hear this is really good stuff so um so did you find that you like did you want to share about them right away or was there like how long did it take before you shared with some unsuspecting poor soul like when and who was that 
Uh, my first enrollment was well sharing. Maybe you shared with somebody that was like, yeah, get lost or mm -hmm. did you, um, yeah. I'm yeah. Well, it wasn't. So it was spring of that year. And then, so then we moved back to three lakes when I graduated and then I had, um, so I started working um, right away when we moved back um, and there really was no interest at all in sharing. I think I like helped you with some stuff. I attended classes with you. Like I went with you. I wasn't like opposed. I just didn't like get it at all. And then what happened is I changed jobs and I was managing, right? That oh, we've sport. got that coming. We're, that's in the next section. So no, I wasn't interested in sharing right away. I wasn't even doing it casually. Like what I talk, guys, would Amy Bommets be in a conversation with somebody casually and offer something to them? Never, ever. Um, do you remember who your first enrollment is? What? Peggy Bennett. We sat at Deja Brew and I helped her put it in. Oh my goodness. And it was a mess. We were like calling. We were, I didn't know. I was like the form. I felt bad. She didn't care. She was so nice. And I just felt like total dude. He would have been really, really nice about that. I remember my very first enrollment was Aaron Sharp after you. And I erased the whole screen after we were all done. Yeah. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your growth. So you went from um, college right into working full time and you were like building somebody else's business. Yeah. So you were working more than 40 hours a week building a business for no residual income. And then something happened uh, and I'm not asking for details on that, but all of a sudden you went from building that person's business to your own business. Do you just want to share a little bit about like that transition, what that looked like? Um, yeah, I was like head down into this job, building somebody else's dream. And like nine months into it, I like hit my breaking point. And I looked at Gary and I was like, I'm done. Um, and he was like, okay, this was one of the first times in our marriage like one of those first, you know, we're still getting to know each other when I was like, Oh no, when I know, I know. And I know it doesn't make sense, but I'm walking over and I'm quitting my job right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that happened and literally like days out 48 hours later, I took my sister-in-law's convention ticket and got on a flight to convention mm -hmm. and, um, really was inspired by the heart of what was happening and realized I told Gary, when I come home, I'll know if this is something that we can do, or if this is like, absolutely not, this is not a good fit. And I called him on the way home and I was like, this is definitely the right fit. So when I got home, we got the launch training, not launch training, share success binder. You like got one for me. You always took the best care of me. You got the binder and you, um, I just remember like watching things online and learning and writing out like, where do I want to be in 10 years? My life could anything look anything like it? What's my why? Like all those things. And so there was a lot of like filling those things out and watching things. And, but I don't remember like doing a lot, but I was like following the binder. Well, yeah, I don't remember doing so. So, um, you know, we, we had, um, a lot of different, um, business tools, um, yeah, well, let me just, let me go backwards here a little bit. So let's go back um, to another really big transition, going from being a, a married woman, no kids, to bringing a newborn baby into your life. Mm -hmm. um, what, what did that do to your doTERRA world? Like, how did you transition from the one to the other? Well, when I left, part of the reason I left, I wanted to be pregnant when I left that job. Like it was like, it had happened in like, we were in that process. And so um, it was like September, October that I left. I started like engaging in doTERRA. And then it was the end of January that I was pregnant with Whitney. Um, and so as that started happening, I... Oh man. I mean, the, so the question is about that transition. I knew that I wanted to hit like a certain rank before I had a baby and like all these things. And I did, I hit silver before I had Whitney and like all these things that I really wanted to accomplish and have. And like, uh, October of Whitney, just like, just shattered my life. Just like totally blew it to smithereens, literally. Um, and I think it then engaged this part of me that was just equally as headstrong about what I wanted to build, but with a complete fierceness of like, 
uh, motherhood fierceness of like, I want to be with my child um, and like finding the balance. And it was, I think it still, it can be tricky, but I was like really determined that she would sleep well. And while she slept, I worked. Oh, I worked. She would take three, four hours nap. She was sleeping like 13 hours a day. I know. And I was working, 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 working. And a lot of good things happened that I would have never accomplished what I've accomplished now had I not put my head down during the hours that I had it quiet at home and and got it done. I thought you were going to say if you hadn't had a, a baby that slept half of her life. She's fine now, guys. I didn't traumatize her. She was just a sleeper. So when you were in that phase, um, you were kind of looking at, you know, you talked about the Share Success Binder, but there was another tool that came into um, your your presence, your being during that time when, when Whit was a baby and you were sitting on the floor doing videos and starting your YouTube channel. What was that business tool? Well, um, video marketing with Mark Harbert. I thought you were going to say Edge Success Bootcamp. There's been so many tools. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, video marketing course that we took that Eddie and Angela Via ultimately led us to um, that I engaged in. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was Emerge, wasn't it? That was all kind of in that time. I can't, uh -huh. I, yeah, that's kind mm -hmm. of crazy, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that, I think that would it be safe to say that these were all like important steps and important tools that, wouldn't you say? I mean, you wouldn't like forgo any of it, would you? No, I don't think so. They've all like, yeah, left their good parts and things maybe I've tweaked. Yeah, I think they've all been an important layer of the process. It's kind of crazy to look back at all of it them. Is. It is. Honest. All the hours and all the money. Terrific. Just smile. <laughs> terrific. Oh my gosh, you were a terrific coach. Terrific coach. Yeah. If you want to hear about that, that's another video. So, um, so you had this little baby, you were trying to work really hard. Gary was working really hard at his job. How did, did you ever think about infusing your passions, like what you were good at into that time frame, Or did you just like have your head down? Were you just like working forward? Head down. There yeah. was no thought about infusing passions. My passions were like reserved. Work for me is like work and um my passions are like I just got to go play an hour of basketball and that's like a passion or like going and showing up at the high school and helping the girls at volleyball practice that to me is a passion yeah. um and so I think that my doTERRA work engages a different part of me hmm. I think it was different though so I mean so then we add Zella in and I feel like now we're at, we have two littles right mm -hmm. And so 2019, the middle of 2019 was like a transition again into adding another little person in, figuring out how to make that business work. And I feel like you put a lot of energy into adding the fact that you were a mother into your business. I feel like it looked different. There was a difference. Are you aware of that or is it just from those of us on the outside? It might be from those of you on the outside. I think that, you know, you change every time you have a baby, you know, you bring another human into the world. And I think there was a lot that happened in our life in, uh, when Zella was little and in, in Zella's life, so much has happened in our family unit that has shifted our whole family unit outside of just her presence. So I think those shifts have really like shifted my business too. Well, yeah. And I think that you've become very, a lot more clear watching you, um, into like, these are my work hours. These are my play hours. And I think it was just like solid, hardcore work. And I feel like you've done, a, you've done a little bit of an about face and you have, um, definitely fun hours and do the things that you enjoy doing even if that might be scrubbing the kitchen floor or something like that. Cause I could work all the time. Like I could like get when Gary and I know kids like, Lord, what did we do? I worked, you know? <laughs> and when it was Whitney and I had like a lot more control over what was going on and like little I worked yeah. and now I just like very much it, our schedule looks so different. It has shifted so much. And I, um, it makes no sense for like what I've created to continue to like you create it so you can shift it when you need, mm -hmm. when you need to. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at shifting, but it was very apparent. It was time to shift. <laughs> um, so one of the shifts came in 2019 in the, in October that, and that month like reads like a country song, like, like the saddest, hardest country song. <laughs> but um, so, you know, do you want to share just a little bit about like, what transpired if you can, and then like what came out of that? I guess the question is, 
what did that glorious, incredibly difficult month do for you and preparing you and God preparing you for 2020? Because there was a shift that happened after that again. And, and, and that led you right into COVID life. Do you, are you able to expand on that a little bit for us? Yeah, I'm not sure I've processed it super well, like, um, but my, really what happened in that October was um, high level overview, you know, we had sold our house, we were living in your basement, Sala was like four months old, uh, Whitney had, had started school, Gary very unexpectedly lost his job, um, you know, he works with my dad, it was not my dad's decision, so it was very intimately, like, the, the physical building was, like, closed down, like, it was so intimately, so we're all living together, my nose was broken, I had a concussion, Whitney had worms, she peed through your bed, um, it was I so I always forget about the worms, <laughs> Gary lost his job. Zella was uh, um, really challenging. Um, and so much, so much, so much happened. Dad tore his hamstring, had pneumonia in both lungs, you know, so many things. So collapsed along. Collapsed along. we were really trying to rally through that. But like the biggest piece of it really for our family was Gary losing his job. Mm -hmm. And I remember calling Emily. I mean, of course we had lots of conversations. We're all under the same roof, but calling Emily and being like, I really think it's time to rely on doTERRA in this next chapter. And I know, I think I could say it. I think she thought like, really? <laughs> really? Um, and I was like, when I know, I know when I'm walking away from my job in 20, I know, like when I, I just know, and Gary and I just agreed that until Zella's birthday, June 4th of that coming year, we were just going to let doTERRA be it and see what that would be like. And it like, it has forever changed the fabric of our family. Like that decision, like our lives will never be the same. Well, I think that one of the cool things that happened out of that is you were like, my mind is blown. I won't be traveling anymore. I'm, I'm like, we were on the road a lot. We were always leaving home driving. I remember the time I, we were driving to um, the Twin Cities and I drove halfway to Anago. Like, which for those of you that don't know, that's the wrong direction <laughs> because we were like belaboring the fact that we were on the road again. We didn't want to leave our families. What were we doing? It was a blizzard. You know, we, we traveled in horrible weather. We had a deer one night coming home from Chicago and that was like $2,000 of damage to my car that we paid out of pocket. I mean, we've had some crazy, crazy adventures stuck in airports. Um, but okay. Amy was like, looked at me in November of 2019 and said, I'm done traveling and I want to figure out how to do this business from my kitchen table. Mm -hmm. Do you remember saying that? And I just feel like that set the tone for 2020. You had, by the grace of God, everything in your mind rolled out of how you wanted to do 2020 before the world shut down. Well, we snuck in one last trip to see Elise Shadavi in Salt Lake. When Another we, training. You know, <laughs> the most recent training and, you know, and system that we were uh, learning, you know, uh, back to basics. And I think there was great value in the foundation we've laid. I've learned not to cling too tightly to any one system mm -hmm. and to really trust the variety of tools that you can have in your tool belt. But the bottom line is that did give us a framework that I was able to shift into online and we were able to go with when it was that no not just Amy wasn't leaving her house ain't nobody leaving their house um yeah. and I think that really but it was true though when I made the decision so I I guys I don't I don't like leaving I hated leaving I hated traveling there's so much fruit from it but it was hard um I think that I felt like when Gary came home that I was going to be on the road, we were like, there's four places we're going to go monthly, Illinois, Minnesota. We had it mapped out like, okay, then like every other month we can pick a bigger trip. We had it really mapped out on what we were going to do. There was going to be a lot of traveling and the doors just never opened on that. They never opened. And then they really didn't open for obvious reasons. And so we just made the most, but Gary asked me at the end of 2020, like, I know this seems like a dumb question, but not really. Was it what you thought it would be? Like where we are thought, and for a variety of reasons, the answer might be no. But one of those is like, I was thinking back to the conversations of like, we had a six month travel plan. Like we were going to get after it. I don't know why I have such a strong memory of you saying, I want to do this business from my kitchen table. I don't know. Maybe I have it out of order. 
that was like 20, that was when Whitney was born. And that's when I did that video marketing course, because I no longer, when Whitney, like I was pregnant with Whitney, when we were driving six hours teaching a class and you were driving us six hours home. <clears throat> and when Whitney was on the table, <laughs> I was like, no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here are the sticky questions. Are you ready? Oh, we have um, okay. this is a fun one how do you really feel about attending doTERRA events like do you is it a, like when Whitney goes to school and she comes home you're like what's the like this today this or this like doTERRA events which way's your thumb go on those this is recorded <clears throat> okay so it's it's a little bit of both but would you say that you know like Okay, because this is recorded, we would both agree that our greatest growth has come from attending I those events. I should clarify with more than just a thumb. Yeah. Um, huge value in doTERRA trainings. They have propelled my business probably more than any other decision I've made. Super significant. I personally, I think they're really well done. I don't have an issue. I don't have a gripe with them at all. This is just over like <clears throat> my loathing for leaving. Mm -hmm. And I haven't gotten to do <clears throat> Zella came with me to convention when she was like four months old. Um, and uh, are we talking about Zella or Whitney? Whitney? Well, Whitney did too. <clears throat> so I am, this is really the first season of life where I could not like it, previously when I had to go to doTERRA event, the logistics, find the breast milk, find the pe like, or like Gary, you're, you're like, moms, you know what this is like. Okay. So Whitney from like eight to 12, you're with one person. Then then 12 to one, you're with one person. And then one to three, you with somebody and three to four, somebody else. And then dad every day over and over again, hated that flying out of Rhinelander hated it. So, so many, like, that's the stuff that I'm like, mm -mm. like the logistics, but actually attending is, it Are, is fine. And I think now I might be in a season of life where it might be different, but they're not happening. And I only no, I'm just, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Okay, so what is something business related that you said you would never do, but then you turn around and then you turned around and did eventually? Phone calls. Oh, that wasn't what I thought you would say. Um, Tell me more about that. Uh, yeah, I was like over my dead body, and uh, I was talking with my coach at the time. AJ, why do I want to say AJ? AJ. And she was like, she's like, "Tell me why," and I was like, "Because no one makes." phone calls anymore and she just like looked across the screen at me and she was like exactly and I was like oh it sucks she's right I gotta be different um so anyway that was one thing I said I would never do what is else what else is something I said I would never do don't can't you just hear everyone chanting the same word it begins with an s and ends with an s examples <laughs> Yeah, I know. I've tried to soften my edges a little bit. I was like hoping the list wasn't too long of things that Amy said you would never ever do. But I think that was the one that came to mind. Samples. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, so this is a really good question. How is what you want? It's not mine. How was what you wanted out of your business changed in the last seven years? Mm. I think it's really easy. I think I have to be careful. How I say this. Um, like that idea of blue diamond, presidential diamond, like, like large amounts of income offers like such amazing, like visioning and even security and dreaming like big, like, like I would have said early on, like it was like big, big, big. And I think that as I've like, you kind of, Oh, I don't know. I hope this is okay to say like you kind of pass through to the other side a little bit. You kind of grow and mature in that. And you realize like, not that it was like ever all that it was about for me, but you kind of reach a certain point where it's like, if I'm going to get to that point, it's only going to be on the basis of like elevating other people, like other moms, like to help another mom experience what I'm experiencing right now boom, elevate, like, let's get them in there. Let's get them there. And if that drives me to that point, awesome. But that like same really drivenness has uh, kind of been shifted into uh, like what is enough for my family and what gives me the greatest, whatever will maximize my family hours. I won't compromise more income on maximizing family time. Like I will to some degree, I, I, I'm all for making a sacrifice, but there's been a shift. Yeah, I think the edges are a little softer. 
Um, so tell us about being a doTERRA diamond. Is it all diamonds and confetti? Um, but I mean, seriously, in the two years since you walked the stage, what's your biggest takeaway about that rank? That it's just a rank, just like any other rank. Um, there actually isn't, <clears throat> there is a difference. There's like great meaning. There's a reason ranks exist. There's great value to them. Um, there's great significance. There are fun perks. There's like meaningful, like things that you get connected into. But I think that, um, when it first happened, I remember, I've never said this on film. I've said it to a couple people close up that it was, um, lonely, that it was really confusing to me because I felt like I'd worked so hard and our team had worked so hard and there had been such great collaboration. And all of a sudden it was like, but only you get to go. Mm -hmm. like you've all done it together mm. but only you get to go yeah um and that was really hard for me even though I'm not a super relational person that was like confusing that didn't make sense and so I think that next time like when the when this all comes back around like the whole world comes back around into a new realm I just want it to feel different. I, I don't really want to do it alone. I'd like to be like Melissa, the doTERRA diamond. And so, you know, like I, I really, I want to do it more together. No, I think we are such a great, I do think this team stands for teamwork and togetherness. I mean, we, we do have each other's backs and um, not everyone can say that when they're working in an MLM. But I'd say that um, you said this recently, you've worked really hard. We've all worked really hard to make this group uh, a group that has each other's backs mm -hmm. and I, you know, it's cool. It's really neat. Um, what's your been, what, let's just talk about personal growth. Um, what has all this craziness done for you personally? Like the whole seven years of craziness. <sighs> Sometimes I just have my head so down in it. I don't even know, you know, like I think about the skills skills that it's taught me, um, like compartmentalizing things and like time management. Um, I think I've learned like about crucial conversations and how to like do hard things in a new way. Um, like my, cre like creating things, you know, it's taught, it's taught me a lot of different things. I, I tend to think of the skill set piece. Mm -hmm. Um, has it softened me and taught me how to look at things differently? I think so. I think life has done that to me too, a little bit though. I think that's true. Life does that. I mean, if we don't allow life to do that, who are we really? I mean, yeah. that's the truth. Um, what has been your biggest blessing from being in doing doTERRA as a business? I think we all can guess this, but you know, we'd like to hear it. What's my biggest blessing? <clears throat> Well, it's a constant, uh, th this is a little bit nuanced because of my number one strength being achiever. This is like a hard place for me to live, but like the reality that I can really like, I could be with my, with my girls and my husband from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and never touch anything. And I still get a paycheck. Like I, it has like elevated family more than I ever anticipated. I don't think I really realized. I mean, those early days of when Gary was home and we were just like, what? what? I just like want everyone to feel what that was like, what it is like. So that's been the biggest blessing. And my answer might change as the years go on, but I just like, I would never trade any of this for anything. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's good to hear after all these years too. Um, so this question is from your father. <laughs> so which doTERRA founder would you most like to ride the tram with in Salt Lake City? No, I, th I think the question was, would you like to have dinner with? <laughs> ride the tram. Oh, good touch. Um, Corey Lindley. Really? No, he was in Mexico though. Okay. It's Corey Lindley or it would be um, Rob. Rob. Oh yeah. Yeah. And can you just give us a little, well, he was in Mexico too. Yeah. I just think they seem funny. And Corey Lindley always shares like the numbers. He's like the one who like flashes the beautiful picture of his whole family, like all 1800 of them, sex, tuplets, triplets, like they, whatever. How many so, sets of triplets do they have in that family? I, I can't even, but I, I think that he is just like, um, 
he resonates with me and the way his brain works and in like his stead, they're all steadfast founders, but like yeah. steadfast in like, this is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk about the future. What do you want to create with doTERRA going forward? No, I think it's okay. There's no, there's no perfect answer. Um, I would like to going forward when I think about my team, I like want to give people their, their voices in a new way, like not just their doTERRA voices, but I want to like, like help them find that, like in like a sense of who they are in their family and their relationships, um, and helping with that. Um, what do I want to do moving forward? I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to like I don't think a ton about that because life is just so sweet right now mm. um, that I don't even, it doesn't mean I'm not still like, I'm still moving forward. I'm still thinking that through. Um, I don't know. Mm. I'm going to have to think about it. You can let us know later. Um, so why should someone start a doTERRA business now? You've asked this question to many people. No, everyone has really good answers. Um, I don't know. My biggest thing right now is like, there is no one on the earth that like everyone's looking at their health differently. Like the entire world is looking at their health differently. And many people are wondering, Oh no, like actually though, Amy, what can I do at home? Cause now I, I, I need to know, Oh, you've been telling me for seven years, but I need to know now actually what you've been talking about for seven years. So, um, there is this whole, like talk about a shift and people thinking that way. And so it changes that conversation. It like people are more ready to hear it. So think about the combination of like the finest essential oils you can get your hands on, the finest compensation plan, and then the readiness of like your audience to be helped and to be cared for with something natural. I think it's awesome. I think we've got people's attention, right? Mm -hmm. So do you have any um, parting thoughts? You've got our full attention. Everyone's listening. <laughs> if they if they've made it this long, um, any parting thoughts? I don't know that I have any parting thoughts. Um, I just will say that this whole thing was like super candid, not at all. Um, you know, it, it is. Um, and so I, I just have learned to, because of what you've taught me and because of who you are and the way that your brain works, you've helped me understand like how to maybe be a little bit softer in who I am still holding that framework and looking at things differently. And, um, you know, every single person, every single person, myself included, how'd you get started? Melissa, 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 Melissa. So I just, um, <clears throat> for the people who are watching this, you know, my, my face and voice, like in the, in the realm of what we do gets a lot of airtime. Um, it's just the kind of the way that that's pans, panned out. It's part of my like drivenness and command and the way I work, but the one behind the scenes who's created all of this is Melissa. Hey, this um, is about you. <laughs> What'd you say? This is about you, not me. <laughs> I know, I know, but I just think that's worth saying that like, there's a really, um, there's a really important dynamic there. There it's, it's worth saying that what you see and when you're like, Oh, Amy had a good idea. It probably came from Melissa and it was systematized and implemented by me and my voice. And so I think there's, um, you know, Melissa is just such a key, you've said, been such a key part of what's transpired. And I think you hold a lot of um, feelings about like, uh, I hope we've all done the right thing. And <laughs> I hold the feeling of deep gratitude because my family would never be what it is. Like our life would never be what it was um, without your vision mm -hmm. and your leadership in that. So I, I know we're all grateful for that. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, thank you. And um, this has been really fun. Thanks for putting up with my questions. <laughs> 500 feet away. Hey, mom. <laughs> Through the woods. And um, yeah, have you, have you thought about who you're nominating um, for your next one? I have somebody in mind, but it's your um, choice. Or should we discuss after? We'll discuss after. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us.